It was a major matchup on the diamond as two West End powers battled it out in a baseball game that came down to the final inning. Welcome to Sportswire, I'm Will Catter. Mills Godwin and Glenn Allen fought it out on a Friday night as stellar pitchers towed the rubber and timely hitting and base running made all the difference in this contest of two teams with terrific aspirations. And boy, did we have some stars on the mound. Alabama commit Jake Smyers on the bump. Strike him out, sit him down. Gets another man looking as well as number 20 goes down and Jackson Tool on the other side. Uncle Charlie throwing the curveball. Bottom of the first, no score chase Fultz. That is ball four and then they get the strikeout, but the steal of second by Matthew Hartsfield puts Godwin in position and the Eagles would soar. That ball is a gapper. That'll drive home a run. One nothing Eagles. Fly Eagles fly off the off by David Trinkle. Still number 22 getting it done. Limiting the damage. Chase Fultz strikes him out, sits him down. One nothing after one. Eagles on top. However, Glenn Allen was going to get to Smyers. They would have to go against, well, it is Godwin's best, really. Strike him out again. Struck out swinging right there. Late to the party on that one. Caleb Whitehead goes down. Fultz in a pitcher's duel early, doing the same. Still runner in scoring position. Gets the strikeout swinging. Down goes Ryan Tortola, and it beat 1 0 after two. We go to the third. Another strikeout man on for Glenn Allen, and they can run the bases with the best of them. The steal by Colin Whitby, and then can't make the play at second. Goes as an RBI, run scored off the bat of Jackson Tool. We're tied at one. Glenn Allen was not done in this frame either. Ball gets away this time, runners at third. He comes around the score, and just like that, the Jags have turned this game around. They have a 2-1 lead after two and a half. Later, still bottom third, gets a strikeout looking. Hartsfield feels like it was low. There's a little bit of that going around. Uncle Charlie, the curveball, man, did he have a good one. Did number 22 chase Fultz. Fultz was full of curveballs and it was working. Glenn Allen got a hold of this, went all the way to the I and the N and got when that was a 90 mile an hour heater that number nine jumped on and Caleb Whitehead. Still though, Smyers getting out of trouble, still just a 2-1 game as twilight starts. Bottom four, strike him out, sit him down, and look at the walk off. This guy is absolutely pumped after four, still a two to one game, just four hits for both teams combined. Then Glenn Allen played a little small ball. That helps put pressure on the defense. It works in the form of a bunt. That would lead to this. Stealing second base just gets in there safely. Well done, and then continued small ball. Excellent execution on the bunt. Not gonna throw it to, to first, so now you got runners at the corners, two on. Later, bases full of Jaguars, a gaggle of Jags, if you will. That would lead to this. Jackson Tool, right back where it came from. One run scores. Here comes another on the air and throw to home. Two runs come across to score, and Tool uses it well as Jackson, with his bat, connects. Two RBIs come, or two runs come around the score, actually an RBI, and then that would be an error, another run that is a big time hit by Benjamin Pulliam, who doesn't pull it, but goes the other way for an RBI single. Jags play three in the inning. It's 5-1 after four and a half. Now, Glenn Allen goes to their bullpen, and this guy was throwing high heat. Number 34, getting it done. A lot of love for Nathan Love. Godwin trying to come back though, runner on second base. I got it, I got it, deep center. I don't got it. Ball gets away, here comes a runner. Godwin in dire need of offense, find some. Put the ball in play and see what happens. He did mash it. And uh, Luke Smyers comes around the score on a big time blast by Jackson York Peppermint Patty. Then, that would lead to this. Ground ball out, but it does go as an RBI ground out as York crosses. 
So what was a 5-1 ball game is now 5-3. Enter number 12 and a double play to end the inning. Daniel Neenaber, who pitched the bulk of the game as a starter against Freeman in their close loss, comes in in relief in the sixth and seventh. In trouble here. Eagles down two. Got runners all over the place. Bases full of Eagles. What does Knee Neighbor do? Well, he walks York. York in RBI. Godwin, a run score. It's now five to four. Just one run away from tying this, a hit away from winning it. He gets strike three. Call does Knee Neighbor, and Knee Neighbor delivers. It's a quality start in his last outing, going five, and in this one, he goes one and two thirds in relief for a save. Five for your final. I mean, they really stepped it up, so I think it was a little bit of a warm up, I think, for Freeman. And we came out here, put the bat on the ball, so I think that was amazing. And if you think that game was exciting, well, folks, you ain't seen nothing yet. Introducing guys lacrosse, Freeman at deep run. First quarter action, Wildcats on the prowl. He shoots, he scores! Nolan Lynch, the linchpin of the deep run offense, puts the Wildcats up one nothing. There's a lot more goals where this came from. Deep run came out on fire. Spin move, firing, fighting the back of that. He shoots, he scores! Jack McNally on a long road trip. He shoots, finds the back of that. 2-0 Wildcats at this point. There'd be more that came from. Still in the first. Wildcats picking, probing, firing, fighting the back of the net. He shoots, he scores. It's Nolan Lynch again. And the Wildcats would have a 3-0 lead, but Freeman was not done. No, no, not by, not by any measure. Passing it around, looking. The pass inside, shooting, scoring. It is double zero. Liam Crawford, the junior. Three to one, we go to the second quarter. Still 3-1 game, not anymore. Blisters that one. What a rocket. By number 23, Jim Apic, the attacker, senior. Getting it done, it's now 3-2. Can the Mavs bring it all the way back to even and start over? Yes, they can. Great pass, excellent finish as well. Number 23 doing the honors, it's Apic again. And just like that, 3-0 lead erased. We're tied at three with 7.37 to go in the second. Mavs still not done. Momentum's a crazy thing in basketball and football and yes, in boys lacrosse. And it was all going the Mavs way. Firing, fighting the back of the net. He shoots, he scores. It's Zachary Stewart and you haven't heard the last of him. 4-3 Freeman. Now it's Deep Brun's turn to come back. I told you this game was epic. Absolutely epic. Passing it around, I'll just fire it from there and find the back of the net. He shoots, he scores. Charles Mooney was money on that one. We're tied at four with 4.58 to go. Still second quarter. I love the aggression, especially guys across. I mean, you can hit guys. You can also get penalized for doing it illegally, but the physical play is fun. Firing, finding the back of the net. Well done by deep run. Great pass, Bobby Fishburn, or no, not Bobby Fishburn, Charles Mooney again, by the back of the net. And just like that, this game is back and forth. Next quarter, fires, finds it again. Jake McNally, doesn't need a map for that. Gets that one to go. Wildcats up. Freeman has answers, firing. Goes top shelf. It's Liam Crawford once again, junior. Yeoman-like work in this one. We are tied at six, 2.51 to go in the third. Still in the third. Looking. Mavs. Firing low shot and in. Well done by Zachary Stewart. And the Mavs would take the lead, 7-6, and seize control of this match. You want more Stewart, you got him. Deep Run didn't want more Stewart. Freeman's gonna do it anyway. This time he passes it off to his teammate who fires, finds the back of the net, and Thomas Bernhardt would give Freeman a two-goal lead at 8-6, and they were not finished either. Deep run, coming back though. Big one in the fourth, number 10. Fires, finds the back of the net, it's Jack McNally again. 
Wildcats trying to come all the way back. Down just one now. Firing. He shoots. He scores. Huge goal late in the contest by number 12, Theodore Walkley. And we're tied at nine. That was done with just seconds left in regulation. So we're going overtime. Deep run won the draw. Had the ball almost the entire overtime period. But in the closing 30 seconds, he shoots, he scores! The game winner, the golden goal. Number 25, Zachary Stewart wins it in a walk-off goal. An unbelievable boys lacrosse match. Ends in drama, ends in OT, and ends in a Freeman win. 10-9, your final. We have some big time signings to get to when we come back. Highland Springs and Verina celebrate a few sensational student athletes signing their letters of intent to play at the next level. Plus it's a baseball softball doubleheader as Deep Run takes on Hermitage. Highlights are straight ahead. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free. Handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, Chief. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? Colleges love extracurricular activities. Well, uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to getschool.com for more info. Welcome back to SportsWire and welcome to Verina High School where KJ Weish and Malachi Cosby, two big time basketball stars, sign their national letter of intent to play at the next level. Nice looking crowd on hand as KJ Weish decides to cast his lot with Virginia Union. Virginia Union gets a steal, two time player of the year, two time state champion. Malachi Cosby gets to play football and basketball at Ferrum. Yeah, I feel like it was a lot of schools calling and texting me, but they were showing interest. They weren't throwing, they weren't throwing no offer, so I was like, I might as well go to a school that already offered me, showing me love. The alumni really want me to go, and the history behind Virginia Union is great. So that's I want to be behind that history, so that's what I'm going to do. When you work harder, the results will always show. So I always play that in the back of my head. That would make me work harder that drive me to push harder every day. Play both sports, for both sports. Congratulations to those two young men, well deserved. To Highland Springs and the Vandy, Vanderbilt Commodores are in the house, why? Because a great track star is signing. I will say I've been here a very long time and Princess by far is the best track and field athlete that walked these halls. You heard Lamont Folsom as Princess Jackson signs with the Commodores. When I went on my official visit, it was it felt like home to me. I fell in love with the coaches, the athletes, the environment, and I just thought it would be a good place for me. I'll be joining the SEC conference next year, so I'm excited to take on that challenge. I think it's going to be fun. To softball we go. The Hermitage Lady Panthers visiting the undefeated Deep Run Wildcats. Get this. Deep run scored double digit runs her last three games. Pitcher pretty good too. Braylon Balser, strikeout number one, strikeout number two. And yeah, she would go on to strike out the side on the high cheddar, the rise ball. Struck out the side in the first inning. And then it was time for deep runs offense to tee it up. Line drive on the ground, base hit, runner at third. Elena Collier scores on the hit by Balser, helping herself. One nothing deep run this first inning. Uh, a lot of runs. That, that ball was blocked. You know, sorry for the footage there, but I couldn't see the ball because the up was in the way. Either way, it's going to lead to a run as Balser comes across to score. And going all the way to third is Gabby Shrepek. Still not finished. That's going to get past the shortstop. Run comes around to score in the form of Shrepek. And the merry-go-round continues as Charlotte Boswell does well. That would lead to this. That's going to eat up the second baseman off the bat of Jessica Colehorse. And uh, deep run in B. 
business. They got a lot more where that came from. Hard base hit. Infield hit leads to a run. Number 13 comes around to score Boswell. RBI ground out there, though, to call it, as they did make the out at first off the bat of Emily Plank. And then return to sender, says Hope Tate. Hope springs eternal as she drives home a run. And Wildcats adding on here. How about this? Off the pitcher and in the center field, Tate comes around the score. Wildcats would bat around in this inning and then some. How about tagging that one to right field by Elena Collier? She drives home another run. Wildcats in business and scoring more than enough runs in this one on the RBI single. Yeah, they put up a touchdown and got the extra point. 7-0 after one. That was enough for Balser, who did get into trouble in the second. Hit by a pitch as Hermitage. They get two runners on, but Balser would settle down. Later with runners at second and third. Swing and a miss, strike three. She gets one out, and then Balser again. Swing and a miss. How about getting the defense involved as well? Deep run, not all just pitching and hitting. They got some D as well. Ground ball, routine play, but they make it. Wildcats would add on to their runs, scoring seven, and then they would put 10 more up, equaling the number on Hope Tate's jersey. 17 to one is your final. Meanwhile, about 25 feet away, Hermitage deep run, baseball. Wildcats already up 1-0. Go to the bottom of the second inning. And a runner on third on the pass ball. And a runner coming home off another wild pitch. Run comes across the score in the form of number 20, Parker Noonan. And it's 2-0 Wildcats. However, that would get away as well. But the play at the plate, catcher making up for it. Nice looking play, number 14. Getting the job done, Nate Logano. And then the strikeout sit him down. So Hermit does limit the damage. Two to nothing after two. Meanwhile, on the mound for a deep run, Will Frank. A Hermitage can hit. Yes, they can. Number 28 doing the damage. A base hit to right by Nate Wapple. And then ball gets away. It's like a re reoccurring theme in these highlights. Scoring a run is Hermitage, number 19, crosses the place. The base, say it, Brody Davis, it's two to one. And then putting on the steal, ball gets away, a double steal. Run comes across the score, and as Wapple makes it work, and we're tied at two. Still, the strikeout gets them out of trouble for Will Frank and company, but we're tied at two. Now we go bottom four. Wildcats looking for more, and that ball is hit. Right back up the middle for a base hit. Wildcats in business now. Ball would get away, so the runner from third's gonna come all the way around the score. So it's an RBI, well actually it's just a base knock for Parker Noonan, who did well there, and then the runner coming around the score and Vinny Porcaro uh, gives them a 3-2 lead. Runner comes around the score here on the infield single. It's Noonan once again, and it's four to two. Wildcats back up by two. They would add on. Let's go to the fifth. That ball is crushed into the gap in left center. Nice piece of hitting by number eight, reeling it in. Carson Striffler, that would lead to this. Oh, look out! Striffler's gonna score from third on the wild pitch. Wildcats adding on late in this one. It would lead to this. Pitching change, ball gets away from the catcher. Another wild pitch, another run crosses a plate. Wildcats putting pressure on that defense. Number five crosses, Vinny Porcaro. And then, uh, yeah, putting pressure on the catcher as well. Ball gets away on the attempted steal. Noonan scores again. All Noonan did was hit, walk, and steal bases and score. Seven to two. Deep run gets a win after a big two to one win in extra innings against Freeman. Well, we hit the pitch when we come back. Tucker plays host to Godwin in boys' soccer, while Verina has a tough customer in Patrick Henry in softball. That's next.
be happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Welcome back to Sportswire. Time for a little soccer action to the pitch we go. Godwin on the road, taking on Tucker. No score, early action, first half. Uh, Eagles would have an opportunity here. Ball bouncing around, shot right at the keeper, however, did not quite bend it enough. Tucker with the save. This should be a very close match throughout. Still in the first. Tigers looking for an answer or a chance here. And a try boots it, but it just goes wide of the net. Godwin's defense was pretty good, and most of the time they were in the attacking third. That's where you want to be. Free kick for Godwin, speaking of being in the attacking third. Eagles got it. Shot just goes too high in a rye as number 10 Dominic Williams tried to put that into the back of the net. Another free kick opportunity for Godwin. The header, too much and over the goal, so nothing there. But the more opportunities you get, chances are it's going to go in eventually. That goes off the head. Could have been an own goal. Nice job by Tucker's keeper. Johnny on the spot on that one to keep that from going in. So still no score. Late first half. Check this out. Fired into the box, headed away nicely. Godwin, though, going to keep this ball alive and this possession alive. And then off the boot, he shoots, he scores! Goal! But, oh, they call offside. So it's still 0-0. The goal does not count. What would count, however, still late in the first, Godwin putting more pressure on as they did throughout in this contest. He fires. Oh, good for three points in football, but this is football, so that does not count still. Nil, nil. Looked like it was going to stay that way, but more opportunities. Great ball movement, great passing right here. Usually pays dividends at some point, right? Firing. Ricochets off the defender. He shoots, he scores. Carter Newman, the senior, gets the Eagles on the scoreboard. It would be 1-0 Godwin at that point. In fact, it'd be 1-0 Godwin at the half. Second half, Eagles looking for more. Big time chances here. Nice pass as well. Firing, good defense. Number 14 for Tucker to get in there. Keeper did a nice job as well. Augustinski was the defender who got in there, a sophomore. And then Tigers. Can they get the equalizer? The keeper says no. Godwin, big time save. Still 1-0. Ryan Bosfield as in goal for Godwin. Eagles looking for a little wiggle room. That extra goal would be really big to make it 2-0. Nice cross. Cannot quite get the finish. Godwin begging for a foul there, but they would not need it as their one goal would hold up. One nil is your five. To Verina High School we go. A little softball action. First inning, one nothing. Patrick Henry make it two on the passed ball. Haley Butler on the mound. Cool story about Haley. She came into this game just 30 something strikeouts away from a career 500 high school strikeouts. Now, she is taking on, in these highlights, a really good Patrick Henry team. Gets a strike out there, gets another one looking right there as well. However, Patrick Henry uh, put some runs up in the first, and they would put more up three to nothing after a half inning of play. Now, Blue Devils trying to get things going. Patrick Henry only has one loss going into this game. That was five to one to an undefeated Mills Godwin team. Yeah, Mills Godwin softball team, really, really good. Patrick Henry, good defensively, good pitching, great at moving runners over, great at getting big hits when they need it, all those things. Haley Butler, good at getting strikeouts. Also, later you'll see, she's also still really good at hitting. Number four, laces that one deep and cannot be corralled by the right fielder. That leads to another run for the Patriots. And when Haley wasn't striking out these girls, they were scoring. She gets another strikeout there and Despite the carnage from the Patrick Henry offense, Haley Butler, 10 strikeouts in this one. That's good for a base hit. 
Yeah, the sun's just awful at Verina when it when it's sunny outside. Seven to nothing, the score. After two, later in the third, strike him out, sit him down. Haley Butler, it's Haley time. Outside corner, strike three called. She sits her down as well. And like I said, eight Ks for Butler. And how about this? The Butler did it. Haley going to leg out a double. She got a walk earlier in the game. Also doubled. Also got 10 strikeouts. So banner day for Haley. Patrick Henry, the better side, though. 13 nothing is your fun. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us, and you can always follow us on X and watch us on YouTube. Have a fun and safe spring break, and of course, afterwards, I will see y'all next time on Sportswire.